Okay. In the last video, last couple of videos, we introduced this idea of building an LED flasher, or sort of as a big project here in electronics. And we sort of boiled it down to the idea that we're going to use these little black relays here that you have in your parts kit here that you got. And so this is an LED flasher with a relay in here is the idea we have. So just to recap, the relay we have, if we look at it from upside down, allows us to control when two pins are in electrical contact with one or the other pin, but never simultaneously. So it turns out when the relay is non-energized, these two pins here will be connected to this pin, if I'm looking at the relay from the bottom. And when the relay is energized, these two pins will be connected to this upper pin here. That's when the relay is energized. And if the energy is taken off again, the relay will relax, and these two will become reconnected to these two again. So this is the, it looks like a normally closed relay in regard to this pin, normally open in regard to that pin. That's sort of how it would be classified. So it's still not clear how we're going to use this for an LED flasher, but let's take a look. The first thing we're going to do with our LED flasher circuit here is if we're going to, we're going to base our design, of course, on an RC circuit. That's going to be a necessity here because we know the RC circuits allow us to control timing and so on. And we'll just give it away here that the, the capacitor that we're going to use here, we're going to use a thousand microfarads right here, and we're going to use a 100 ohm resistor right here. Use the 100 ohm resistor law. Those are the two we're going to use. So you can see that the time constant in this case here is going to be something kind of small. It's going to be 100 times the, the 1,000 microfarads, something like a tenth of a second. It'll be our time constant in there. So you'll see that things will be a bit slower, but we can certainly see a tenth of a second go on with our eyes. Now, the way we're going to get around this capacitor discharging problem that we mentioned to have to manually charge and discharge the capacitor is why don't we just try to use the switching mechanism inside the relay here to remove power from this RC circuit entirely when we want the relay to close and we want to just recycle again. Let's just get rid of the power that would otherwise be charging the capacitor. Okay, so you can see that right off we are not going to connect the top of the resistor directly to a power supply because sometimes we want to remove that power from it. And so we're going to do something like this. We're going to redraw the relay in sort of a way we can understand here. Then we'll translate it to a circuit probably in the next video here. So if this is the switching mechanism here, let's always connect the switching mechanism to plus 9 volts. So in other words, we'll, we'll get there with the relay schematic in a minute, or you can go ahead and look back at the other video where we diagram what's inside the relay. But we want to connect the 9 volts here right to the switch, the part that flops around, so we can sort of direct where the 9 volts is going to go. So when the relay is normally closed, and that's when we just start up the circuit here, we're just going to route this 9 volts. Here's the contact inside here. We're going to route that directly to the RC circuit. Now, it's very, be very aware of when two lines cross like this in electronics. If two lines generally cross like this, that means there's no connection. Okay, no connection there. But if two lines cross like this and there's a dot there, that means they connect. We don't really do much of this anymore make a line jump over another one. That's sort of uh, the way they used to do it maybe 50 years ago. So I think now modern schematics are sort of like this. No crossing unless a dot is explicitly telling you there's a crossing of the wires right there or a connection of the wires. So here the two wires just cross, but they do not touch. Just keep that in mind. Okay. So what you can see here is if this were all there was to the circuit, when we applied power or turned this thing on, you can see that the 9 volts will indeed pump current into the RC circuit and the capacitor will charge. Okay, so that's nice. So we'll see the voltage at this point here gradually rise just like we saw several times in previous videos. Now what we like to do, but we like to at some point decide when this coil here, which is inside the relay, when this coil here has all the wires wrapped around it as an electromagnet, when is this going to energize and pull this switch down to quit charging the capacitor. And when we quit charging the capacitor, um, then it can discharge and the cycle can start itself over again. Okay, so right now there's no magnetic field pulling the switch down. But what if we connected this coil sort of like this? Just like this. Do you sort of see what, what this can do? Do you see what can happen here? As the voltage at this midpoint starts to rise slowly, at some point, the voltage here will be high enough that the coil can become energized. And when the coil becomes energized, 
this magnetic field is going to appear in this coil here and it's going to pull the switch, this switch here, away from that contact. It's going to pull this floppy part of the switch sort of down to here. Because that's what the magnetic fields inside those relays do when they become energized like that. Pull the switch down like that. And that's exactly what we discussed sort of happens in here when it becomes, when the relay coil becomes energized. Now when that happens, look carefully at the circuit. When the voltage here rises to a high enough point, is able to energize the coil and pull the switch down. Look at how the relay now, or excuse me, not the relay, the RC circuit is no longer connected to the battery. And that's the key point. That's the key usefulness of our relay right here. It's, if the RC circuit is no longer connected to the battery, it means the capacitor is no longer charging anymore. It's physically disconnected from the battery, folks. There's a gap here. The 9 volts certainly is coming down, but this switch, owing to the energized coil, has been pulled the other way, and the current from the battery is not flowing to the RC circuit anymore. It is not flowing around here anymore. So what will happen? Well, with the battery removed, the RC circuit can no longer charge the capacitor up anymore. But look very carefully at the capacitor, though. Notice that the capacitor itself is not shorted out the way we wanted to with this wire right here. Remember, we wanted to short the capacitor out to start that charging cycle. But this charged up capacitor, let's just say the switch is just switched here. We have a capacitor that's all full of charge here. This charged up capacitor, the two plates are actually connected to each other, aren't they? They run all the way over here through the wire that runs through the coil and back around again. And if you look at the spec or even test, test it with your own meter, the resistance of the coil is about 330 ohms. So it's like a 330 ohm resistor is sitting right there. So the capacitor does discharge. In fact, it'll discharge with a time constant here of 330 times that 1,000 microfarads. There'll be that time constant. That's why we said the time constant of the, of the 100 times the 1,000, what gives about a tenth of a second, isn't too large. Excuse me, isn't too small because it's also made up with a discharge time constant over here. So the thing, uh, the relay sort of has time to be seen. But keep that logic in mind. The capacitor is now discharging through this coil. And what will happen if it's discharging is eventually the charges here will start disappearing until we reach a point here where the capacitor is entirely empty. All the charge has been bled off of it, and the capacitor is now basically empty. Well, what happens then? When the capacitor is empty, remember that the voltage on a capacitor is sort of proportional to the charge on it here. The capacitor, that's right, can no longer energize the coil in the relay anymore. So this magnetic field, which is push pulling the switch down, disappears. And what are we left with? We're left with the switch back into its original configuration like this. They're actually touching there. And this magnetic field is all gone. Now what's going to happen? Well, guess what? The RC circuit is now reattached to the battery. Charge can flow from the battery down this way. It can get that RC circuit to charge up again. And guess what happens? The voltage at this point right here starts to slowly rise again. When it rises and reaches a certain point, the coil becomes energized. When the coil becomes energized, this magnetic field is produced that pulls this switch down, releasing the RC circuit from the battery, and the cycle can repeat itself all over again. So the trick then, the trick that's before us here, is to take this logic here, and this is the cleverness here, that we've sort of put down here with this, this switching mechanism and all that. I'm just trying to make a little room here. Is to take this idea, which we think is pretty solid here, and see, this is your challenge. This is your electronics challenge here. Again, just the wonderful part about electronics, the way, you know, this is something we get to figure out now using just a bunch of parts that cost us less than $10. How could we figure this out till we end up with a little project that is an LED flashing at us here? How are you going to translate that into the the data sheet that the manufacturer gave us, and let's just, just quickly put them together here so we have them all on one sheet like this. Here's that switching mechanism. It goes up and it's connected to this pin right here. And this one here sort of goes in here and it's connected like that. This is the original schematic right here. So can you translate what's in the relay, what's in this box, with this idea over here? If you do, you'll have your LED flasher.